What's going on guys? Today I got another product from this brand named Suti Photo. Probably most of you guys don't know this brand, but this is not the first time that I actually ever reviewed this brand right here. I reviewed some tube lights and some other lights that they make, and they actually make some pretty good products. This is the uh, Suti Photo P230BI. This is a bicolor light, 230 watts. And a quick disclaimer, Suti Photo sent me these slides for me to test it out and review. I don't get paid to say anything here and all my words and opinions, they are my own. So this light is rather simplistic. You just power it on, change the color temperature and the intensity, and also it is app controlled. And also the application is very simple as well, but nothing freezes, nothing crashes. So it's a very good app, just like the other big name brands apps. And as for every video, I'll show you guys what I like, what I don't like about the slides. So the entire body here is with the plastic and I already knew about that before I received the product. So all I have to do is to wait until it gets here to see how plastic that thing really is. They actually reinforce the inside of this part here that mounts on the stand that has metal inside. So when you actually mount the slide here, you have a very solid feel because I'm actually tightening very tightly and it doesn't feel cheap actually. And just in case if you don't have a soft box or if you don't feel like installing a soft box or anything special in the front here, you can also utilize this hole here to install an umbrella, which this light also has. So on the other side of the light here, as you can see, the actual handle is also made of plastic, but this is actually a ABS super hard plastic. And I was actually surprised that this thing does not make the light droop at all, and it does not require any strong tightening. So here's the light loose, and this actually feels very nice by rotating here. So when you actually tighten this here, all it is required is just a quick little tighten, and this thing is not gonna go anywhere. So whatever position that is, it does not droop. And the front element here, as you can see, is a very large cop chip, which is pretty nice. And also it features a glass front element here, which means when you take this light outside, especially summertime, bugs is not gonna be crawling in here and damage your LED chip. Another thing to keep everything light and simple is the fact that this light does not need a ballast. All the controls are done from the back of the light right here. So it includes a large DC power supply. And they also include this Velcro here. So all I have to find is a piece of foam to ensure the power supply is not gonna slide. So right now, now it stays where it is and I also recommend you to install the power supply as close as possible to the light because when you actually raise the stand the whole thing goes together right and on the back of the light it features a three prong XLR so when you actually plug this in here it is very sturdy nothing moves nothing dangles and this cable is about six feet long which again I recommend you to place the power supply as close as possible to the light I do this with every other light that I have when I unbox a light Speaking of which, there are no cases that come included with this light. So all it is included is the actual box right here, and it does not include a reflector either. So it's just the light, the power supply, and the uh, front element protector here, and that's pretty much it. But this light actually has more pros than cons. For example, it's a very light light, very small, simplistic, and it does what it's supposed to do. The first thing that I want to know as soon as I unpack a light is that the color temperature for example, if you switch from the warmest to the coldest, will that be brighter? Because usually a lot of lights, especially the cheaper lights, what happens is when you actually crank it up to 4,300 degrees Kelvin, the light's gonna be a little bit brighter, which causes you to have to go back on the camera there and adjust your exposure, ISO, aperture, or whatever, right? This light remains the same, almost the same exact intensity, whether you are changing from all the way to the coolest or to the warmest. The second thing that I check is fan noise, of course, because when you are in a quiet room doing interviews, you don't want the fan to actually mess up your recordings, right? So this fan here was actually very happy to discover that it makes almost no noise. Even on the uh, quiet room, you're not gonna have any issues with the fan here. I can actually feel the nice airflow and this light does not get super hot. It gets warm, warm enough, but never hot here. And again, the fan is quiet. This light has a CRI of 96, a TSCI of 95, and it weighs approximately one kilogram or 2.4 pounds. Color temperature ranges from 2700 degrees Kelvin to 6500 degrees Kelvin with a 200 Kelvin forgiveness. And it also comes with six effects built in. I hardly use any effects, maybe a lightning effect, but you know, most lights that I've seen or reviewed here, they always need some work. So the effects are just okay. And I also noticed that you cannot change the color temperature. All the effects that I played here, you only play at the uh, warmer side of the light, either 2700 degrees Kelvin, but never on the uh, 6500 Kelvin or the 5600 Kelvin. So that is a little bit a downer. How about this for flickering test? I'm actually shooting at one four thousandth of a second and there is no flickering. 
So the app's name is SSLED, which is very reliable. It doesn't crash, it doesn't freeze. It's great and also very simplistic and it connects the light very quickly. So right now I actually have the light paired right here. When you swipe to the left, you can actually de delete, which says delect. <laughs> it's funny, but here's the actual light inside the app right here. So all you see are these controls. You have the intensity from zero to 100%, and also you have the choice of uh, decreasing at 1% increments or up, as you can see the plus and minus signs. And at the bottom is a color temperature from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 degrees Kelvin with 100 Kelvin increments, as you can see, up or down. And you can control the light just by the uh, light itself, or at the bottom here, you can control the lights as groups as well. So I killed my main light temporarily. Let's go to the effects so you can see how it plays. It won't take long at all. As a matter of fact, I want to show you guys what these effects do. They're always okay, but here's the actual lightning, which you can actually adjust the frequency, the intensity, but not the color temperature for some reason. Maybe they will update the uh, light here. I don't think there's a way to update from around this light to uh, what I can see. So, and here's the actual fire plays like this here and then you have the fireworks three more to go and then the fault bulb and again you can also adjust the frequency here and then you have the TV and again they always play on the warm side of the light here and finally the paparazzi and again you can actually adjust the frequency here and that's what the app does. So it's pretty simple, but it's reliable and it doesn't crash, doesn't freeze. Every time you connect this light here, it will always work, along with the other products that they make here. We can actually connect them individually or in groups, it always works. Right now I have this huge modifier, and as you know, parabolic soft boxes, they're already heavy, and this light has no problems at all taking this modifier right here. And it locks very nicely. And when you actually adjust up or down, when you leave it, it will not droop any position, you lock it very quickly here. There's no need for over tighten the thing. And I'm gonna leave it in the mirror here. And as you can see, it does not droop. So it stays there, So, which is pretty nice. Now, the one thing that I don't like is because on the light here, the leveler, you don't have the option to kind of pull it out and then adjust. So when it stops right here, it is what it is, but it doesn't get in the way here. But I wish this thing could actually have a little spring here that can actually pull it out and maybe adjust this, uh, you know, a little downwards here. You know, I usually like this pointing down, but it doesn't do that. So here's a quick example of what the light is doing to my skin and to my face here. And I actually have the uh, Canon R3 with a color profile called Cinetech, which provides a warmer tone. So I currently changed the uh, color temperature on the camera to 5200 degrees Kelvin. In the ISO, I'm shooting with the native ISO with this camera, which is ISO 800 F4. I'm about four feet away with a 90 centimeter soft box on butterfly mode, which is the light placed right in front of me here, slightly higher. And I also have a reflector on the bottom here to kind of fill in some shadows. And this is what you get here with this light. And if I want it slightly colder, all I have to do with any light, I just, you know, adjust the color temperature to, I don't know, right now, let's say 6,500 degrees Kelvin, and you have this here. And let's meet halfway, about 6,000 degrees Kelvin. You have this here, back to 5,600 degrees Kelvin. And now 3,200 degrees Kelvin, right there. And 2,700 degrees Kelvin. Right now I have the camera set to 3200 degrees Kelvin, the light set to 3200 degrees Kelvin, and this is what we get as far as color goes. Now one thing that I really like about what this light does is the fact that when we actually change the color temperature here, right now I'm at 17%, shooting with the same ISO F4 and all. So as you ramp all the way down to 2700 degrees Kelvin, and then 3200 degrees Kelvin, 4300 degrees Kelvin, and 56, and then all the way up to 65, you notice that the exposure barely changed, if that will be 5% probably. So as you can see, it remains the same through the entire spectrum of the color here. And again, I'm shooting at ISO 800, F4, and this light is only at 17% right now, and at the 1% at this distance and settings we have this here, back to 17%, which I believe is the perfect exposure right now. And then 50%, you get this here, and then 100%, you get that, which is plenty of brightness for most interviews at this distance right here. And when I go all the way back here, I'm still lit very nicely. Then I'm approaching the camera here closer. So right now, I'm at 
18%, should be 15% right now. It's a little bit of a spot in my forehead here. And let me see, probably 9%, yeah, something like that. So at 10%, at three feet away, you get this here, which is nice. I know you guys know how to do math. I just want to also demonstrate visually here. Now I have the camera set to ISO 400 with the light at 40% and you get this here. And when you crank it up to 100%, you still get blown up, which is good. Here's a quick look of the back of the light. To power it on, it takes no time. Here's the brightness from 0% to 1% increments all the way to 100%. And here's the color temperature knob from 2700 degrees Kelvin to 6,500 degrees Kelvin in 100 Kelvin increments. To change the group here, simply press and hold the set button. And then with the same button, you change the groups from channel one to channel 12. The menu says to press the M to adjust these values here, but it is actually wrong. It's still the set button. Now to change the group here, I try to press and hold this button, but I don't get to change the group here, which actually you don't need for most applications, even if when you're using the app unless you group in the lights, but from here, I honestly don't know. And that's the end of my video. I hope you find the contents helpful. If you want to help my channel, please share, subscribe, you know, like, all that good stuff there. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I'll respond to everything that I see there. So once again, thank you very much for being here, and I'll see you next time.